So your idea for Passamurai then is to take it out of equity, everyone works for minimum wage, everyone across the board yeah. for eight seventy five an hour or eight twenty five an hour, whatever yeah. it is yeah. now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then And see who can who can actually make something work on that. Because I don't well, the structure we, we there's no credibility in terms of the fundraising models. Nobody is going to fund really experimental art. Nobody's going to fund on a regular basis the emerging communities and you've got uh, you know, uh, what's called Obsidian as a really good example. They're doing everything right. Obsidian is the... Is Obsidian it? is the black theater yeah. company that is trying to copy the success of Soul Pepper. They want to be the black Soul Pepper. They don't want to scare their audiences. They want to kind of uh, give them quality stuff and make people feel good about it, appeal to the bourgeois, uh, the emerging middle class of black uh, right. in Toronto, and, and of course there's a huge amount of that, Possib the possibility is large, but so far they're just, <laughs> and there's been no, you know, no thing that has actually been able to lift and, and break through on that. And that's, you know, it's a bit, it's a, it's a real pity. But the, you know, the hope and the continuity is going to be with the, the new face of the, the place. It ain't going to be about the old, you know, like um, my mother, uh, bless her soul, she's dead now, but she, and, uh, she loved Royal Daltons, and her greatest love was to actually find a Royal Dalton that meant something to one of her, gran her children or grandchildren. The statuary. The, yeah, the, the statuary, English. The footman. And, and the... it's all about footmen and black, well, the one I got to choose was a blacksmith which was a very romanticized version of her father, who was my grandfather, who was a working class blacksmith working in a factory in Guelph that we lived with when I was growing up, when my, after my father died. And he was an amazing Scottish, uh, salt of the earth kind of guy. And uh, if you were honored, you would scrub his back when he came home from work. And I got this Royal Dalton pretty picture of a guy doing a horseshoe, and this was as close but she liked this. Now, the Royal Dalton story is there only because it's like a, a romanticized version. But sometimes when I go and see too many white people in plays playing in Toronto or Stratford or Shaw or stuff like that, and when I, you know, I try and relate that to going on the subways or walking on Young Street, Blur Street, any of the streets, they look like Royal Daltons. Right. You know, an 18th century thing. It doesn't matter what they're doing. But they're basically, you know, they're, they're, they're just protected in a little kind of cocoon of beautifully painted faces and lovely done. And my, you know, my mother used to love these things. In so fact, you're saying Soul Pepper is the Royal Dalton of theaters? It is very close to it. And, you know, I, I was actually on uh, the Toronto Arts Council <coughs> board once when Soul Pepper was coming in for an early grant. And uh, one of the interesting things about the Toronto Arts Council uh, Committee for Theatre is that it, it, they do try and respond to the new racial configuration of the city. Right. So, the, you know, the, the, there's, we have Asians, blacks, blah, blah, mix. <laughs> and the, the, one of the black members of this committee turned to an Asian and said, they call themselves soul pepper, not much soul in this soul pepper, <laughs> you know? And it's true. I mean, you know, occasionally they'll get you know, Karen Robinson, mm -hmm. to go in there and do something. But it, the, they cannot move away from what is a 19th century configuration. You know, it's an actor-manager. He's, he, right. you know, he's Henry Irving. Yeah. <laughs> you know, except he doesn't try and direct. I can't remember. I think Henry Irving tried to direct every once in a while. So, I mean, to be yeah. mischievous, the, yeah. the... And what they've done, I'm sorry, and they've, they've triumphed with money and real estate. Like they've, you know, they've done brilliantly in raising money. I just look and I say, holy mackerel. Yeah. And they've done brilliantly in setting up some, you know, usable real estate. They've opened that space to other people and as far as I know so far, nobody has succeeded in chipping away at their audience to come and see the shows that are not stamped by Soul, by Soul Pepper. Mm. So, you know, real estate is a very complicated thing. And, you know, dynamics, audience dynamics are hugely complicated. How do you get the next, like the audience that... But Soul for, Pepper is more in tune for, with its audience than Passamurai is now. Oh, yeah, well, Passamurai doesn't have much of an audience right now. 
Uh, but is that because of the times, a, though? The imaginary audience. Is that because of the times? Partly, but the people only don't part, have a taste for the collective. Partly. They don't well, have a taste for. Well, maybe the times it. means that there can't be people like me who are so reckless that they're willing to, you know, or so desperate that they're willing to break all the rules. We're not in a time of rule breakers. Why I don't completely despair is first, I think there is a continuous need to fill this open space, this magic moment at some level or another, and I see you know, enough emerging talent where they have the skills to do that. You know, I'm working with a, 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 one of these emerging groups called One Read. They're about a year and a half out of theater school, and they have a hit, which is not mine. It's called Nor the Cavaliers, and they're looking around for their second show, what they do as a follow-up. And so I've been working out of the theater center. In fact, I would say, the theater center is doing many of the things right. that yep. I used to do here at Pass yep. You know, yep. they you know they they have activity going in there. You you know the actors exploit themselves for it as a creative enterprise. So it's outside the box of any equity definition. And I don't even know whether these three actors I'm working with are equity or not. But we go and play as creators. So you could call it a writing. I mean that's how I used to break the equity rules. Is to uh, I never had rehearsals. <laughs> so I didn't need a stage manager for the developmental part of it. We were just writers trying to, and the only way those writers could work was on their feet. I mean, they, they, the typewriters didn't work for them. So they just worked on their feet, and this was a writing conference. And they all, I mean, you can argue about all kinds of other shit, but I think we were you know, comparatively really, really fair about the uh, sharing the rights of things.